Hey everybody, Patrick here from One Shot Kill It Media. I've got a brand new unboxing and feature review for you today, and that's going to be of the Adaball MROC, the Modern Rifle Optic Component. I'm really, really excited for this optic here. Um, this is a 3x32 or a 3 power fixed power scope. Uh, it's got a illuminated chevron reticle, ballistic reticle. Um, and basically what this is is a culmination of Adaball doing uh, basically what their customers asked for. Uh, Adaball is huge on Facebook, as you know, and uh, basically they just put some feelers out there and said, hey, shooters, what do you guys want on your rifle? And uh, the feedback that they got was people want a Chevron reticle, they want a ballistic reticle, they want a wide field of view. Uh, they want something that's going to be able to take a beating, you know, and keep on kicking and stay accurate. And that's exactly what we got here in this MROC Optics. So really, really excited to tear this open, uh, get it out there, get some usage with it, and uh, just let you know what I think of it overall. So let's go ahead and get this thing opened up and start this uh, unboxing and feature review, folks. Here we go. All right, folks, so let's go ahead and get started. We're just going to go ahead and ramble off the first few facts that we've got on the box here. Um, so obviously the MROC, Modern Rifle Optic Component, made by Adaball. We've got magnification of 3 power, uh, 3 by 32. Illumination is red. You've got six different illumination settings. Eye relief is 2 inches. Field of view at 100 yards is 37.7 feet, which to my understanding is the largest field of view um, for any optic in that range. Uh, fully multi-coated anti-reflective lens, fog proof, shock proof, waterproof. Battery type is a CR2, and of course it comes with the Adaball lifetime warranty. So that's pretty kick-ass in itself. Let's go ahead and pop it open. There we go. <laughs> All right, I'm just going to set this here so you guys can see it. All right, so what do we all have? We've got the instructions here for the MROC. Got a picture of the reticle here, other basic information. We'll go ahead and go through that in just a little bit. We've got, let's take a look. Looks like the battery here. So we've got a CR2 battery. CR2, there we go. We've got the optic itself. And we've got a lens cloth and a little lens brush. That's a nice touch. Not necessary really, but nice touch that they include it. Here we go. Okay, so let's pop the actual optic out of the bag here. All right, and there we have it. Now, just looking at it here, I mean, it's robust. You know, this thing feels like it could definitely take a beating. Um, it is a little beefy overall, but I don't think that's a bad thing when you're looking for an optic that can stand up to some abuse. All right, folks, so if you aren't familiar with the company Adaball, the MROC Optic, uh, the MCRDs, or their 4x32, or anything like that, um, this has been a long-awaited optic here. The 4x32, which I have right here, this old battle axe, um, has been through quite a lot <laughs> in all of our different videos. As you can see, it literally has the shit beat out of it, um, but always kept it zero kept on ticking, um, and I still use it regularly on my other rifles, so great optic overall. But what Adamal needed was a replacement for this 4x32, so that's where the Adamal 3x32 came into play. From what I can understand, people are already falling in love with this one, and just happy that there is an option as solid as that 4x32 uh, back on the market, which is now the MROC. So let's go ahead and keep moving. I uh, just thought I'd go ahead and pull out the old 4x32 for some fun. Here we go. A <laughs> uh, couple of things I like right off the bat. We've got the caps here covered by cap covers. We've got tethers on the caps, so they're not going to go disappearing on you when you loosen them up. Uh, we've got our elevation here, windage, and our battery compartment. Uh, so let's take a look here just to see what the actual turrets look like. Here we go. See if I can get that to zoom in for you. All right, so there's a look at the turret itself. 
And let's just... So you don't get an audible click from when you turn it, but I can tell you that when I turn it, I feel a positive response, a positive click in the turret itself. So I like the audible click idea, uh, but you do get that actual response in your finger so you know every time that you move uh, to make an adjustment that you know it's actually taking place. So you do get feedback from the turret itself, it's just not audible. Here we go. I'm going to put that cap back on here quick for us. All right. So looking at the other side of the optic here, we've got our adjustment for uh, illumination settings. So it looks like for each setting that you have here, You've got the ability to turn it on, off, on, off, on, off. And I like this idea because I know myself and I'm way more likely to turn it off and not forget it uh, if each every turn here actually does the opposite <laughs> of turning it on, which is turning it off. Uh, so I do like that feature that Adaball's included here where there's basically an off portion for every other turn. That, I think, is handy. Uh, if we look at the base of the mount here, we can see that we've just got some thumb screws. So simple enough. We just, it's one piece, too, here, just to show you. So you've got the two screws that hold the piece of the base on. And that obviously attaches to your rifle. And from what I understand, you're only supposed to go ahead and tighten these, uh, you know, finger tight and then you turn them about an eighth to a quarter turn and no more than that because you don't want to do any damage to the actual base or the threading. If we turn it around again here, we do have our battery component, or our, I should say our battery compartment. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and undo that. So that way we can put our CR2 battery in. So let's just drop her in here. Okay, so we've got our battery in the battery compartment. I like the location here too, it's easy enough. You can access it when it's on the rifle. Uh, no need to remove it and throw your zero off. And then I forgot to mention, we do have a little Picatinny rail right here on the very top. Um, so obviously you could throw like a little Adaball MRD up there, uh, RMR, or any other sort of red dot you might wanna use. So that's a nice little feature too to include that. Um, and then also just so you can see, coated reflective lens. And what we'll do next is get you a, a look here through the reticle, or I should say through the scope at the reticle, so you can take a look at that chevron and the ballistic reticle itself and the way that it's designed. So let's go ahead and check that out too. All right, folks, so here you have it. This is the Adaball MROC Modern Rifle Optic Component. Um, this is utilizing the uh, number six illumination setting on the reticle for the chevron and I'm just going to zoom in a little bit here just so you can get a picture of that reticle very nice clear glass let's refocus here but yeah this thing is slick I'm really digging it so far all the feedback that I've heard from people too that have checked it out are really really liking that reticle Something very similar as you've seen on other brands of optics, like Trigicon, for instance, like in the ACOG style, uh, BDC reticle. Um, so very, very cool. Glad Adaball has added this into their, uh, their options for reticles. It's just awesome.
All right, folks, so I just wanted to give you a quick rundown of some things you might find important when getting used to this optic. Um, just taking a look here, let's take a look at the, the basic uh, sort of just description of it. Uh, the Adball MROC enhances the ability to identify a target with accurate shooting precision for an AR-15 or similar assault rifles. The MROC is a lightweight, rugged, fast, and accurate 3X magnification optic scope with an illuminated Chevron bullet drop compensator, BDC. It is shockproof, waterproof, and also features toolless windage and elevation adjustments. So obviously we can just make these changes with our hand. We don't need a little screwdriver or anything like that to actually make the adjustments to windage and elevation. Um, so let's go ahead and just take a look at a few of the characteristics. Uh, field of view at 100 yards, 37.7 feet. Field of view angle, 7.2 degrees. Eye relief, uh, 2 inches to 2.8 inches, probably depending on the individual. Uh, click value is half MOA. Um, windage elevation max adjustments is 60 MOA. Parallax free, 100 yards. Battery type, there's one battery, a CR2. Uh, illumination color is red, lens coating is the uh, fully multi-coated anti-reflective. Uh, it's waterproof, shockproof, and fogproof, and the length is about 5.11 inches. Um, so let's just give you a quick look here. In terms of installation, uh, it obviously has the pre-installed rail in the mount, um, so that'll go, ahead and pick any, uh, that'll go ahead and fit your Picatinny rails. Um, they say the ideal location for your site will be towards the rear of your rail if a backup iron sight is not used. This will afford the best eye relief. All right, so there is a little caution here. It says thumb screw knobs must be tightened using fingers only. The thumb screws are designed to remain tight if installed firmly with fingers only. An additional eighth to quarter turn may be applied if desired, but do not tighten farther or use pliers. Do not apply thread locking compound to the thumb screws um, or those little attachment knobs. Permanent damage to the mount and base knob will result. Uh, there you go. So, like they're saying, don't crank down on these with like a wrench or anything like that. Uh, just keep it simple, tighten them down with your thumb, and then maybe at the most tighten them down a quarter turn or an eighth of a turn. Um, let's take a look here. Obviously you don't want to over adjust, you just stay with your 60 MOA of adjustment on your, uh, on your actual turrets here. So you don't want to adjust past that or else you could do damage to it. Um, let's take a look here. All right, so operation of the illuminated Chevron BDC. The bullet drop compensator has been strategically designed to provide exceptional features while retaining simplicity in operation. Uh, the BDC is calibrated for use with 5.56 ammunition. The user does not need to make any manual adjustments between shots at different ranges. Ranging capability is built into the BDC. Um, let's take a look here. So. Below you just have a feature of the reticle itself and basically what they're showing here is the different increments. So it looks like it, everything happens in increments of 100 meters. The tip of the chevron is 100 meters zero all the way down to the bottom hash being 800 meters. Now in terms of zeroing the site itself, your adjustment, adjustment increments are half MOA or half minute of angle at 100 meters. So each click of the elevation and windage knobs will result in a half inch of movement of the bullet placement at 100 meters. Therefore, two clicks will move the bullet one inch at 100 meters. MOA drop for each mark will depend on environmental conditions, weapon system, type and weight of rounds being used, etc., etc. Now here's the big thing. This BDC is designed to be zeroed at 100 meters with the top of the chevron being the point of aim. This is the most accurate method of zeroing the sight. So you're supposed to zero the MROC at 100 meters using the tip of the chevron as your point of aim or your point of zero. Now here's a note for you. If 100 meter range is not available, the sight may also be zeroed at 25 meters if the 300 meter mark is used as the point of aim. A 25 meter zero is less precise than a 100 meter zero. So obviously you can zero in at the 25 meter range using that 300 meter mark, but the rest of your BDC might be off a little bit in comparison to what you would get with a more accurate zero using the tip of the chevron at 100 meters. Um, other than that, just regular maintenance and care is mentioned on here. And then obviously the warranty information, Adibal as always, uh, number one priority is exceptional customer service. 
Adaball warrants your site to be free from defects, materials, and workmanship for the lifetime warranty of your product. All the, costs are so all the costs that are associated with the product shipment will be incurred by the owner. Adaball products will be refunded or replaced under the warranty service and must be returned in original packaging with original accessories and must include your completed return authorization request form. So again, Adaball customer service is out of this world. If you have a problem, contact them. They don't put a lifetime warranty on there for no reason. They're not full of shit. They want to take care of their customers and make sure they're happy. So if you have an issue, like I said, give them a call. All right, guys. So in closing, I'm going to be putting this optic, the MROC, Modern Rifle Optic Component made by Adaball. I'm putting that on my MGS Citizen Rifle. If you haven't taken a look at the MGS Citizen Rifles, you're missing out. These are some kick-ass rifles using top quality components smoothest shooting AR-15s I've ever used, literally the smoothest AR-15s. They use a rifle link gas system on them and it just, it increases the dwell time. It allows everything to function properly and just a little bit more smooth. Um, so I just can't wait to see what I can do with this optic on that MGS Citizen rifle. I'm extremely excited to test on that. That's going to be my new optic testing platform too, uh, just so you guys have a heads up on it. Um, other than that, I love the reticle. Uh, I think it's going to be awesome to use. I think uh, quick target acquisition will be easy. It's very, very clear. Uh, the glass itself is very nice. It feels solidly built. Um, there's nothing I can really think of to complain about this optic. Um, the tethered caps, I like that feature. Um, having them all three tethered together might be a little bit of a pain in the ass, but we'll just have to wait and see what happens uh, with a little usage and, and what I can get used to. Um, other than that, I guess the only other thing I'd really like to see out of it is maybe a quick detach mount option at some point in the future. Uh, I think that would be nice. Uh, but really, the thing that sets this optic apart is the fact that it's not going to look like every other three power uh, prism style scope out there. And I think you guys all know what I'm talking about. I mean, some of these companies, they buy them from the same manufacturers and they just stamp their label on it and it looks exactly the same as everybody else's. Um, with Adaball, you're obviously not going to see this optic turning up anywhere else. This is their own design, um, and from what I can tell, it's, it's going to be kick-ass. So again, really excited for this one, folks. Uh, thanks for tuning in. As always, please hit that subscribe button. Um, I need more subscribers to be able to bring you different information on products that you want to spend your hard-earned money on. That subscriber base being larger and larger helps get me in front of other you know, manufacturers and so on where I can create a, a relationship with them and uh, you know, review these different products, like I was saying, that you want to spend your hard-earned money on and make sure that it's worth it before you do it. Um, so thank you uh, for all those folks that have subscribed, and please have your friends you know, go ahead and hit that subscribe button too. I really appreciate it. We'll keep these good videos and good information coming your way. Um, yeah, other than that, folks, that's about it. Um, go out there. Uh, like us on Facebook, follow on Instagram, like Adaball on Facebook, follow them on Instagram. Um, same thing goes with MGS Firearms, who has the rifle that I'll be using for testing from here on out. So really excited for it all, folks. Uh, I will talk with you more soon and give you some feedback after we get this thing on the range. All right, have an awesome day. Thanks again for tuning in.